I'm getting kind of bored of <laughs> looking at that scarab, so I'm gonna switch the model out. And also just to demonstrate, you can do this with any number of models. It really doesn't matter. And that's what's so cool about this. I have 60 subtools over here. None of them have UVs as far as I know, uh, but I can still take this and do some really cool renders with it. And again, some very, very quick look dev. So let's go ahead and grab our Z plugin. We'll throw it over here. And in this case, uh, now that I mentioned that, uh, let's not use Z Compositor. You can use Z Compositor uh, to do this. And if you watched the previous massive amount of videos before this, uh, you know how to do that. But let's go ahead and do a manual one, just so you can kind of like work through any problems, uh, kind of think around some corners, maybe do a little problem solving, and um, give you some opportunity to change things up a bit, even when it comes to the type of image you're gonna be rendering. So what you used to have to do is go in here to document, turn off proportional and make this square. Well, you don't have to. We can keep this at uh, 1345 by 973 or whatever. If you want to do like a uh, 1920 by 1080, we can go ahead and hit resize. Hit control N. Let's go back into our document and I'm going to take the zoom and zoom out. And just so we can see those edges a little bit better, click the back button and drag off. And we'll just choose another gray here. Redrag our truck out, go into edit mode. And then we'll just kind of frame our truck right in here. Now, another thing too is uh, it doesn't even have to be fully smooth. Whatever you see here is going to get rendered. So, you know, if you do, this has dynamic subdivisions on it. We can go over here to, actually these subdivisions are all uh, dialed in because they're all baked. Uh, but if you did have dynamic subdivisions turned on, there we go. So there, if I hit D for dynamic and then shift D to turn that off, you're going to see it's just fake subdivisions, but that's okay. It's still going to render a smooth result and I can continue to do look dev on that surface. Because again, it's just going to render to an image. Now, the first thing I need to do is go in here to our either our draw menu, scroll down and say uh, store camera, and we'll go ahead and name this truck front, and or you can go in here to document zap link properties and go ahead and say you know just store a custom one view in there. So that way, if you ever get off axis, you can go through either either one of those and uh, get your view back. So first thing, let's go in here to startup material and just grab that normal MRGB. And then we're going to render, let's drag our render menu over here. And we're gonna go, let's go ahead and get rid of that Z plugin menu. We're gonna go over here to render properties, turn off shadows and just hit BPR. So you'll get a nice alias clean view of a normal map. So let's go down here to our render pass. And you're gonna see we have a composite in here. Just go ahead and click that. And we're gonna just throw this into a new folder Call it truck maps, and this one we'll name normal. And I'm gonna switch this from JPEG to Photoshop and just hit save. Now, when you ran the ZBrush compositor, it went through and grabbed these Z materials. So you have a bump and cavity and flat color, tangent space normal, etc. So you can bring those in, but I'm gonna show you an alternative uh, that you can get some of those maps. Uh, one map we're not gonna be able to get is the occlusion map. But just to kind of explain what I'm going for here, let's go ahead and just keep our normal map. But now we need to export a plane with UVs that's to the same aspect ratio of the plane we just made. Well, we can do that within ZBrush. Let's go out of edit mode. Say always switch, hit control N to clear our canvas. Let's go up here and grab in our tool palette up here, a plane 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, and let's switch our, uh, this back to like startup material. So we have a plane in here and this plane does have UVs on it. But let's change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 or 1920 by 1080. In order to do that easily, I'm going to go in here to Texture, Import. We'll just grab that normal PSD we just made. Go down here to Texture Map. Select that normal. Oh, one more thing we need to do. This isn't a real plane. So go ahead and hit Make Poly Mesh 3D. And now we can go down here, Texture Map. Load up your texture. Hold down Shift. Click Poly Paint from Texture. There we go. So now... This uh, texture is applied as a poly paint to this plane, but all I really did that for is to create that 16 by nine aspect ratio that this texture map had. I don't need the poly paint on there, so I can just unclick colorize. And now we have a plane that's a 16 by nine ratio. It has UVs on it. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna say export. Actually, one thing we're gonna do, the way that we drew the truck out, it was pointing like the tail was over on the right and then the front was over here to our left. Well, it's gonna be flipped uh, when we export this to ZBrush. One easy fix for that is to go over here to display properties and then choose flip. And that'll just flip the normals on our plane. And now if I go over here to export, I just throw this into compositing truck maps in here and we'll just call this our render plane. So now there's a couple maps we're gonna need later on. We have our depth map, that's gonna be our displacement map. 
Uh, so when we hit BPR earlier, that's just another map that we got created. So you know what? We'll just go ahead and call this displacement to keep things simple. Uh, we have a mask here. We'll call this opacity. And I think that'll work. So now let's load up Substance Painter. Let's go in here to File, New. Let's go ahead and change that document resolution to 2048. Let's go to Select. Navigate to where you have your render plane. Go ahead and hit OK. And there we go, we have our render plane. Now there's a couple of little setup things we need to do. Uh, we do have perspective turned on, so of course we wanna make this orthographic. I'm gonna take this and say orthographic view. That'll allow us to snap straight over here. Navigate to where your maps are. And we might as well just bring all these in all at once. All, we really, all I really wanted to show you was normal map, but we'll go ahead and say opacity, displacement, and normal. Grab all these, drag them right onto your shelf here. Select all of them, change them to texture, Go ahead and say import resources to project, hit import. And while we're thinking about it, let's just go up here to file, save as, and just call it truck painter. So now let's get some more maps out of painter. So if we go in here to texture set settings and scroll down, we don't have anything plugged in. I'm just gonna take our normal map here, and this is our tangent normal map and just plug that in. So there we go. And if you roll this around, if it looks weird, you may have to go in here to edit Project Configuration, set it from DirectX to OpenGL. That'll flip that Y channel for you. There we go. So now we have a truck. And again, this truck is just applied to a plane. If you go up here to the, your display settings, show your mesh wireframe, it's really just a truck on a plane. However, you can still pass that lighting around the normal map. So I'm gonna turn wireframe off. And this is actually fine. You don't even need to put in the displacement map if you want to bake out your shadow passes like we did in an earlier video, which we may do today. But like I said, we're going to need some more textures in here. So let's go into Bake Mesh Maps underneath our texture settings, scroll down. And we're going to say but use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. And we've already got our normal map, but we don't have any of these other ones. So let's go ahead and uncheck our normal map. Let's change this to 2048 and hit Bake Selected Textures. And that'll go ahead and create all of our other maps. Now, some of them are going to be better than others. And the ones that don't quite fit the bill, we can update that in ZBrush. So let's go in here to Project, the Project tab here. So you can see here's our curvature map. That should probably work. And that's been already plugged in here, so I think that'll be fine. The ambient occlusion is kind of weak, so we can replace that. The color map, we didn't really have one, so that's fine. Although we can do a uh, better ID map than that. All three of these are already fine. We already know that. Position is fine. Uh, thickness we can do, although in this instance, we probably don't need a thickness map for a car, but we can do that in uh, ZBrush. And our world space normal map is perfectly fine. So let's go and grab a quick ambient occlusion map and an ID map from ZBrush and a thickness map. So back in ZBrush, let's go grab the truck again. And we'll either go to our document or our draw camera view and we'll just click that so we can reset this. Go ahead and turn perspective back on. Now for AO, it's pretty easy. Just turn on ambient occlusion in your render menu, render properties, AO. Go down here to your AO settings. I like to turn that blur down quite a bit. Crank my res and my raise up, and then go ahead and hit BPR. Now under your render pass, you have an AO. So go ahead and click that, and we'll just call this ambient occlusion. We didn't have a thickness map, but you can uh, go down here and BPR SSS, uh, turn that on. So we'll turn off ambient occlusion. We'll turn on SSS, change any of these things you want. I'll turn that blur down just a bit. Hit BPR. There you go. There's your thickness map. And you know what? Let's go ahead and turn the floor off. Yeah, still put shadows on the floor. Ah, that's fine. So we'll go in here at SSS. And we'll call this thickness. So now let's go over here. Let's turn on polyframe, but turn off line. Let's go here to flat color. Hold down shift and make and turn off uh, all your colorized brushes there. And now when we hit BPR, this can be your ID map. So let's go ahead and dump this out. Let's call that ID. And now let's drag those into Substance Painter. Again, we just go straight from Windows here, ID, thickness, AO that we just made, drag those on in. Again, select all of them, change them to texture. Import your resources to project, hit import, go back to the project tab, and now we can replace some of these. So our ID map here, we'll throw this in. Here's a better ambient occlusion and a thickness map.
So now that you have all your maps in, let's go ahead and do the rest of the uh, setup that we need to do. So under texture set settings still, uh, we're gonna add some channels to this. Let's go ahead and hit the plus sign. Scattering, I don't think we need to pull in. We don't need any subsurface scattering really. I just showed you how to bake the map. Um, but we'll go ahead and throw in an opacity channel here. And in order to have that show up, we'll go in here to layers. We'll make a new fill layer. Um, this paint layer you can go ahead and get rid of. We'll double click this and call this opacity. And down here under properties, let's turn off everything. We only want this to affect our opacity channel. And in this opacity channel here, we're gonna drop our opacity map and wherever it's white, it'll show up. Wherever it's black, it'll be gone. However, you'll notice it's not gonna do anything. That's because we need to go up here to our shader, which is now, right now it's at the PBR metal roughness. So if you'll remember from the previous videos, if you wanna use opacity, you gotta come down here and choose PBR metal rough with alpha blending. If you wanna use opacity and subsurface scattering, you gotta choose this one right next to it which is uh, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Test. But we're not using that, so we'll go ahead and choose. There we go, and then it disappears. Again, it's still just a plane here, but now it looks like a truck just sitting in space. So now we can add our displacement if we'd like. So let's go back into our texture settings here. Let's go ahead and add another channel for displacement. And you're gonna see even the layer we just made added a displacement channel. So every layer you make inherits your texture channels that you create. Let's go ahead and add another fill layer here. We'll call this displacement. And again, this time we'll turn off everything except for displacement. What's gonna drive this displacement is the Z depth over here. So wherever it's white, it's gonna be pumped more forward. Uh, wherever it's dark or black, it's gonna be more receded, <laughs> receded into the background there. So let's grab this right there under your displacement. And you're gonna see, it's not gonna do much when I turn that plane to the side. So what we gotta do is go back into the shader we have displacement enabled by default. It's set to height. Let's set that to displacement. Let's go ahead and change that scale up here and it'll start doing it. So it does a pretty good job, but it's kind of a crummy uh, quality here. So go in here to the subdivision count and just crank that all the way to the left. So now I'm gonna hold down shift and snap that camera to the front view. We have again, orthographic chosen so we can look straight at this plane. And now you can see we're starting to get some decent displacement. So let's like crank that all the way over to the left or to the right. There you go. So now when we move those shadows around, uh, which you haven't turned on yet, it still looks the same. It's like we have a normal map on there and the lights, you know, kind of going around. What changes is if we go here to the display settings and then go down here, or I'm sorry, up here to shadows, and we'll go ahead and switch this over to intensive. Now that geometry is actually going to cast a shadow. Now there are limitations to this, like we mentioned before, uh, when we were doing the scarab with the antenna, it, should, it wouldn't necessarily cast shadows just like this, but this is a really good example of cast shadows that work pretty dang good. Even though that's displacement just shoots that geometry straight back and the angle that truck is taken, you're not really gonna notice too badly uh, that these shadows aren't perfectly accurate. They're actually pretty good. So cool, go ahead and save your file and then get to customizing this image.